Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? Episode 48. We're almost to 50. Almost. We'll be there next week. Uh, I, I feel like I want to be, I want to be happy and get into the episode, but we have something to address first and it's just weighing on my heart and we just got to do it. Yes, you guys, we have something to address from last week's episode that was just a complete mistake slash misunderstanding slash I don't even, we're, we're, we're sorry. So basically what happened was that as most of you know, if you saw the episode, we covered Alex Weiss and her kind of weird disappearance and then entering a cult and it was all very bizarre. And one very insignificant and quick part that we covered and we put in the video was Lily asking me if Alex and Gen X Pen had dated. I quickly say, yes, they did. And then we move on with the rest of the topic. Like we don't really touch on it. We just say, yeah, they dated. We had no idea that apparently they didn't date. And I didn't know that because of many reasons. But the main reason being, I don't really follow either of them. And I wasn't like when you're not present for the topics that we cover and we only get the surface level stuff, it's really hard to understand like all the nuance and you just pull from like what you've heard or what you know and sometimes you get it wrong. And honestly, the only reason, cause that it was not relevant to the story. We did not have to include it. We weren't like trying to include it. We weren't trying to like reveal anything because we didn't, we didn't know it was something to be revealed. <laughs> the only reason I even brought it up was just cause the only reason I knew who Alex was was because I had seen Jen posting with her back in the day because I knew who Jen was. So I was just kind of like trying to contextualize in my brain. And I wasn't saying that from like a behind the scenes someone told me like I just I had seen stuff on social media and assumed wrong clearly. The reason why we're even mentioning it is because it did get brought up a lot in the comments and people interpreted us mentioning that as us having some sort of insider or behind the scenes like influencer knowledge of the fact that they dated. So what really happened is they were best friends and all of their fans speculated that they were dating and it was this huge rumor that they were dating, but they never actually confirmed, like they never said anything. And that was not us confirming it because we don't, we don't know them. But people thought we were confirming it. So the comments came from a place of like, you guys have no right to like expose someone's private relationship and all that stuff. And, and literally we were like, wait, what? Like we were so confused. So we got it wrong and I kind of battled with, do we address it? Like, do we not? It's, I know it wasn't like this malicious thing we did or whatever, but I think the nature of our show, we're covering so many things. We're going to get things wrong sometimes. Like we obviously try not to, but because we're especially doing two episodes a week now, we're trying our best to do the research and pull everything together. When we do mess up or when we do put out something that isn't factually correct, number one, we're gonna edit it out. So we did edit it out, but it takes time to process. It's not like an immediate thing. YouTube is wonderful with their editor. Number two, we can just come on and let you guys know, hey, we got this wrong. This is how we got it wrong. And we will, you know, we learned. There was some people like just very kindly letting us know, which like, thank you for informing us. I Always. Let some people had realized that we just were misinformed and then yeah. other people thought we were like maliciously trying to out them and we we're like no absolutely not like if they didn't date they didn't date but that is out of that video and if you didn't know they didn't date i was gonna say i hope that this isn't drawing more attention to this situation than it needs to be but um we're sorry yeah yeah but anyway there's a lot okay like this uh first topic that we're going to talk about is a situation that i didn't know about before yesterday okay like i'm trying my best here i'm just trying to obviously pull everything I know, but it's hard. But speaking of, to shift gears a little, the thing that Jesse did look into, of all things, I feel like you would have been the person following it from day one. And because really? I had brought it up a few times and she kind of was like, eh, I don't know. And it like involves some like darker topics. Yeah. So my brother, Joey, he always suggests topics if he sees them on TikTok. And he's been sending me this guy named Ken Watts or wax? Walk, walks? Walks, I believe. Walks, wax. See, I don't know shit. He's been sending me his TikToks and basically the guy is insane. Everyone has to have at least seen him a little bit and then maybe scroll past him. He starts out, he's, his, his look has changed a bit since the beginning and it's been months, but he first popped up and he was kind of like this young guy that was very like well-dressed, presents himself very like serious, informative. And he comes onto his TikTok to tell everyone that he's been deep researching the, I guess, alleged serial killer situation going on in Chicago. So basically what he's been researching surrounds, at least the Chicago instance, surrounds the smiley face 
gang theory which literally sounds like a movie i know basically all it is is it's a group of like uh investigators and stuff kind of started this theory where there was a chain of killings like and they put them together because there was graffiti that was a smiley face like kind of close it's never been confirmed it is a theory and this all started in the 1990s i think even recently there has still been weird killings going on that people have connected and they say they think there's a serial killer in these areas and i see that on tiktok a lot so then I see Ken pop up one day and he's like talking about how he's investigating these uh, killings and he's really making headway and he's really involved in the investigation. Yes. And I don't know, like I don't have the TikToks because a lot of these things and that's what makes covering these like hard. Some deleted. of them have been deleted. Exactly. Yeah. And like it is a well-known thing on TikTok, but it is not, it hasn't like exploded. It's not like all over Reddit or anything like that that I've seen. So he himself on a TikTok claimed to have been almost taken twice in the last year in Chicago. So I guess because of him almost getting taken twice, he felt like it was his life mission to crack this case and figure out what is going on in Chicago. Why are young men, you know, being attempted to be taken? Like, what is going on? He definitely, like, was coming across as being very, very invested in these cases and, like, very serious about his dedication to, I guess, solving it. <laughs> yeah, and he got a lot of, like, attention from this on TikTok. So his video started going absolutely viral because he really made it seem like he knew something and he had, and listen, I just want to say really quick, this isn't unheard of for someone that is a just like member of the public to find information that ends up finding killers. Don't fuck with cats. Oh, I've heard of that. I never saw it, but I have heard of that. Ooh, yeah. good one. I definitely recommend. But something about him is a little off and that's all confirmed later, but he would do things like this. There's a serial killer in Chicago and I was almost one of their victims. Hey Mark, my name's Ken and I'm sorry we're meeting like this, but I've probably been tagging your video over a hundred times. I'm not sure if you've seen these comments yet. I actually already messaged you on Instagram, but I have been investigating this and covering this since I was almost taken twice just this year. So there's a couple things that I think you can help me with. I've been building a map and this is you now on my map. So what you're looking at is black is where people were found in rivers or lakes. Purple is where women were missing who ended up being found in one of those locations. Uh, orange, which you are, is an attempted pickup. And I wanna show you something. I wanna know, do you remember what side of the park left. You said that you and your friends were on opposite sides of the park. I'm guessing you were on this side because these are all of the Chicago police cameras. Really quick sidebar, I've actually gotten my hands on a map of where all of the police cameras are located in the city of Chicago. There is one in River North. And now let's check River North for my attempted pickups. So you see what he does? He like just makes videos where like, okay, I guess that's some sort of relevant information he's bringing up. So people get kind of hooked on it and they're like, oh, okay, interesting. From my perspective, I saw some of these and then I was like, am I just dumb? Like, am I not getting the like aha moment here? I feel like he would be like acting like he was revealing some big development in the case. And I was like, Okay. No, he would never do that. He would never pretend that he found something that he didn't find. <sighs> Turns out, my God, is that an understatement? Except for when he cracked the case, Jesse. Did, oh, did yeah. you forget about that? Oh, no, I didn't. I've got it right here. I think it's literally called Ken Cracks the Case. <laughs> That's what it's called. This is a little bit out of order, but I do want to show you this because he really does make it seem like I've got this. I figured this out and it did work for him for a while. And then when it kind of, you know, like when you lie, it's like he got too confident in the lie. And then, yeah, and then it, it comes time to show, like show, prove yourself. And then you just can't like, that's kind of what happened here. So he cracked the case. <laughs> the way he says this too. Yeah, I know it's so bad. So he responds to a comment that says, if a TikToker cracks the case, I'm going to be so impressed. And here's what he has to say. I hope you're ready for this then because last night at three in the morning, I cracked the case. I was able to crack it last night because of you, because of everyone who reached out with information for me. After Mark gave us a profile, he gave us a description of that driver, people then started contacting me via email, via Instagram message, whatever, with their experiences. Over time, I was able to isolate one guy's experience leaving a bar where he was able to get a license plate of a car in a driver that matched that description. Last night, at two or three in the morning, I got another email from somebody else describing the same exact freaking car down to the beginning of the license plate in the same exact descriptor of the driver. So first of all, I want to back up for a second and just ask you how that 
that doesn't mean you've cracked the case. Like, <laughs> okay, well, do you have the guy? Did you turn him into the yeah, police? Yeah, he's sitting I in don't... his living room. He made a citizen's arrest. There's multiple layers to this. Absolutely not doesn't mean that he cracked the case, but also what people started realizing, especially around this point, and this was more recent, but even earlier on when he would continue to bring his evidence to TikTok was, hey, that's not ethical. You can't do that because there's a reason why law enforcement like seals certain parts of cases because if the killer, which killers are notorious for going and looking at the news and keeping up with their own crimes mm. and how it's covered in the public, they're going to know what the fuck you have on them. And if they you have their license plate, they'll just change it. Like, hello? Okay, so two people that have been supposedly attempted to be abducted, like you cracking the case was just that they both had the same description of the person that did it. Wouldn't they have told that to the police? It seems like he was connecting dots that probably were already connected somewhere else. Yeah, oh. probably. But also this is just to give you a little bit of insight into how he would actually cover the case. Now, this isn't why we're necessarily talking about him today, although I think that there's a lot of problems Layers. with his, <laughs> I don't know, like these are real people that are actually missing or actually dead. I mean, and we've gone into that before with true crime stuff, how there is seemingly, especially nowadays, like a disconnect where people don't, they can't seem to grasp that the things they're talking about involve real people. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I too, before we get any, you know, further, I did see on TikTok Meredith Lynch, who's someone who covers like a lot of different things happening on TikTok. She covered him and it's been rumored that he is, um, he posts on his Instagram story, that he was sending out some cease and desist and looking into some potential lawsuits. So like, we better be careful, sister, because I'm not trying to get sued. I know he's blocked a lot of people on TikTok. And last thing is, if you want to pay for a quick chat with Ken, don't worry. That's more reasonable. It's only $30. And somebody actually took Ken up on this offer. Her son was murdered a long time ago in Chicago. So she ran out of options. She didn't know how she was going to figure this out. So she thought she can trust Ken and sent him this email. She booked a call with him and guess what? What do you think Ken did to get the award for worst human being on the platform? That's right. He didn't show up. But don't worry, you know, maybe he gave her a refund because, you know, he didn't show up. I mean, that's completely right of him to give her a refund and wait for this, guys. You're not going to believe it. To make it even better, what does he do? What does he do? Does he not give her the money? He blocks her. The reason this was so interesting is because in the beginning, he was like a voice for the voiceless and he was going to be this like person that saves the day. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait a second. Is Ken actually doing anything or is he making all of this up? <laughs> The reason why people started speculating is because people were on board for the most part, kind of amazed with his amazing evidence. And then he started throwing in some pretty wild, you know, curveballs. Well, or... he started basically saying he was like involved in the investigation. Like he had been brought into the fold. He basically said that the FBI tried to recruit him. <gasps> this so... is my favorite part of the whole time, of the whole thing. Someone commented and said, can someone with the FBI please hire this guy? Which is a very TikTok comment. It's like, like, girl, just because he knows one plus one equals two doesn't mean he should be a mathematician. But you know that that comment is the exact kind of comment that is fueling this entire charade. Like that is him being like, oh yeah, I should yes. be in the FBI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this was his response. What's funny is that the FBI did try to hire me. They actually tried to recruit me twice. He then screenshots his emails. And his emails are from FBI jobs do not reply. They specifically say, dear applicant, we noticed your application. <laughs> application, bitch. Oh my God, I can't. You mean recruiters don't uh, reach out to you to mm. fill out applications? Mm-mm. And there's more. Hold on. Let me see. He has since deleted these. So these are like third party videos, but he goes on to show the actual email and it is quite clearly like a just copy paste, like automated response from the FBI. It says, we want you to be a part of the next generation of elite special agents. Sign into your account. All this bullshit. But it's like all part of the application process. Like the fact that he He's showing it so confidently. Yeah, he thought proof. he ate with this. Yeah, he thought he ate. It's so concerning. And it just makes me wonder, I'm like, how did he get this far? He talks about how like a private investigator that was working on the case had reached out to him. And the way he talks about it is the way he kind of talks about everything. It's very cryptic and very like middle school fake boyfriend or girlfriend where it's like, yeah, I totally have I'm a girlfriend. I'm dating a supermodel. Then... She's just in Thailand and she will be back exactly, ever. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, this is it actually. Somebody just knocked on my door and it's 8.30 at night on a Sunday. And so I go and I check in and it's not someone I know. And so I open and I'm like, what's up? And they're like, 
Hey, my name's X and I'm a private investigator looking into the smiley face group. Um, and they asked me if I'd been in touch with a different detective that someone had put me in touch with. So uh, he actually just went back downstairs to secure his parking and uh, he's going to come back. He's in a full black suit and everything. So. He's in a full black suit. Um, yeah, Men in black. I think this is about to get uh, very interesting. So I'm just going to post this now as like evidence that somebody just came to my house at 8.30 at night on Ooh. a Sunday <laughs> night. Literally no, had not contacted me previously. Um, just to put it out there that something's going on and it uh, looks like we're moving fast. So I'll, uh, I'll try to update you guys after with what I can. Thank goodness we have this clear evidence that someone's there. For someone that's investigating serial killers, maybe don't let a random stranger into your home who just- That is like besides the point. I'm like, clearly no one's there, Ken. Come on. And then on top of it, it's like, you're so much of what you're doing is unrealistic. That's immediately how people receive this. So it's the internet, okay? People can turn real quick and they did. I feel like this was the time that everyone really turned. Yeah, people were like, a random guy in a black suit showed up to your house. So they were speculating. Somebody comments just to make sure that Ken's okay. I mean, Ken's valid fine. because why would you? <laughs> Why would you let someone in your house? But he's fine. The PI private investigator just left. Um, I'm okay. Thank you everyone for your Good. concern. Thank you for looking out for me and for the wellness checks. And thank you for my parents for calling the police uh, to make sure that I was okay. We spoke for two, two and a half hours. Um, he is part of a team that has been looking into the Smiley Face gang for years. Uh, there's actually another detective who I will you know, not mention the name of, of who course. has been trying to get in touch with me for a couple of days now to speak with me about the stuff that I know, um, which is very useful to them. So <laughs> there's a lot that I know that I have never been able to post on here and I won't be able to post on here because I am apparently now part of the team. Oh my and God. Yeah, um, it's interesting to have confirmation that this is kind of what I thought it was, especially in Chicago and Austin and Pittsburgh and Wisconsin and a lot of other places that we're gonna continue to work our way through together, but um, I'm gonna help them a lot with their tech stuff, with the map building, with uh, the resource gathering, with the data collection stuff. What are his credentials? Like, how is he qualified to do this? What he does right now is he is a chief marketing officer for an app called Foresight, which has nothing to do with crime. It's actually a calendar app that's basically you just like put in like, I'm going here this day. It's a calendar. You can do that on your calendar on your phone. But anyway, so he goes on to then explain, basically one of the people that started the theory of the Smiley Face Gang was Detective Kevin Gannon. Okay, so remember that name because Ken then goes on to say he's working with him. You're familiar with the Smiley Face gang theory, then you probably know exactly who he is. If you don't know who that is, Detective Gannon worked for the NYPD for 20 years, and when he retired, he was the most decorated officer in NYPD history. For the last 15 years or so, him and his team have been trying to track down these people and get justice for those families. Last night, he asked me to join their team, and I have accepted. So now me and the four people that I have working for me on this have joined forces with them, and we all have different roles to play. But because of this, we now have access to resources that we did not have before. We can further these investigations at speed that they had not ever seen. I called him this morning and gave him that license plate number. He's having it run right now. When people question that, he produces an email that can only be described as absolutely written by himself, allegedly. My favorite part about Ken coming in with the, coming in hot with all of his evidence, like that uh, really <laughs> telling video where he doesn't show that anyone's there, yet that's the evidence to show someone's there. This is like him showing emails that so obviously could have been written by him. Does he realize that it takes two seconds to make an email address? Like, I just feel like his demeanor is very off-putting. And I'm not just saying that because we know what we know. Like the second I saw him, he gave me the heebie-jeebies. He just seems, to be too like, cause the info that I have, like he, it's like, he's so smart and he's got this over everyone. And it's just like this kind of almost condescending attitude towards the entire thing. Like right, right, right. He, he's breaking the entire thing in two days and it's been going on since the nineties. Like, what do you mean? So something that got really problematic quick, like I mentioned, he was the CMO, chief marketing officer of Foresight, that app, is that he started plugging that app in the middle of TikToks where he was covering cases. When this had been, like at the peak of like, he had just cracked the case and now it was like, enter business opportunity. Well, fun fact, 
the CEO actually bragged about his engagement. So we'll watch this right here. This is Meredith Lynch. Yeah, I was gonna say I've this. seen her stuff. She and she definitely got blocked and is always very sassy. Oh, 100 percent This is Start Engine. It's a place where you can fund startups and Foresight, which is Ken's app, has been on there. And this is a post from 416 showing investors that they've had this viral surge and pause to read basically it details how their CMO, Ken, has, you know, a huge TikTok reach and basically he did a viral video where then he, you know, put in about the app and now just pause to read. It says, so Ken decided to try something new yesterday by quickly referencing foresight as a side topic at the end of an unrelated post about murders. You forgot that part. That's just me, uh, but you know, paraphrasing. This maneuver clearly tipped the algorithm in our favor and the results have been truly astonishing. So that paragraph alone, is like confirming that it wasn't like he happened to just mention this company in passing because it is a company he works for. It's like, no, he strategically did this as a way to see if they could drive traffic to the app. Oh, 100%. He then apologized as the cycle goes. So a lot of things came out before his apology. Um, I couldn't find them, but I did see them in the moment and I think they've been deleted off of TikTok. So I'm not gonna go digging for them just in case like the people who made them don't want them found. But a couple of his ex-girlfriends came out. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh yeah. And they both had very similar things to say, which was that Ken was extremely allegedly, this is all alleged, this is their account of what happened, but that in the relationship, Ken was extremely controlling, would force them to have their location on at all times, was like, stalkerish he's really into maps yeah oh my god oh my god that's true they didn't like talk about like abuse or anything other than like emotional abuse and feeling very very suffocated yeah. by him because he's very very intense and controlling and just suffocating so yeah that was an interesting side note so all of that had come out at once people were on his ass about the lying about the fbi thing lying about the private investigator thing the girlfriends then the app pushing like everyone was pissed and this was the apology that he came out with that's still up on his tiktok as of today and he's in a full suit so just a side note. Oh my God. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to address something that has come to a head over the last week. As many of you know, this investigation has been my all consuming passion over about the last month. And what started as my honest effort to bring more awareness to a serious public safety matter. My reporting on this topic has since turned into a contentious subject. And I now realize that it's not my place at all to continue chasing this story, despite my own personal connection to it with those two attempts on me. I, I bit off a lot. <laughs> I haven't been sleeping as much as I should. I've burnt myself out and I frankly got a little bit lost in the sauce over this story. I acknowledge that it was insensitive to reference my startup on those two occasions and posts pertaining to this case. Uh, I'm a passionate guy who's passionate about the stories that I follow and of course about the content that I make. But I made a mistake by intersecting those two parts of my life and I want to apologize for the families impacted for having overlapped this other part of my life in this, this in an inappropriate setting, it won't happen again. And the information about the suspects that my team and I were, have been able to find has been passed to the proper authorities. I've decided to no longer post about this story publicly to prevent further conflict. I, I care so much about this case, I really do, but I realize that I can't report on it while balancing this other pursuit and my life. I need to find the screenshots of these emails that he posts and claims were from Kevin Gannon and stuff because he says like, oh, I spoke to this detective for two hours. He'll say that in a TikTok, right? And then the email will be like, it was so nice speaking to you for two hours yesterday. Like it's very cringe. The way he regurgitates the exact same like pieces to make it like, oh, that'll confirm yeah. that, that happened. My favorite though, didn't he signs one of the emails? I mean, <laughs> Kevin Gannon signs one of the emails. He like signs off with, much love. And he calls himself silly too. He's like, I forgot to do this, silly. Like, are you, a det are you sure? Like, no, this is not a real detective. So there's a lot of like, um, you know, things like that. But this apology, as you can imagine, was not received while well. the comments are still off. Wait, also not to mention, if you were legitimately emailing back and forth with the detective, would you ever think it was appropriate to be posting your emails on TikTok? Well, that's the thing. There's so many, like he presents himself as this person who understands how all of this works and like the FBI needs him because he's got the, you know, he's got the insight. But really like his practices on TikTok are so far from what a detective would do. Like there's so much privacy that you would want as someone who's like an investigator of any kind. You don't want to be, first of all, a fucking TikToker where you run to TikTok with your evidence. Like no, no detective's going to do that. 
that. And also, if you really, like, even like you mentioned earlier, safety-wise, like, do you think the serial killer is just gonna, like, let you figure everything? Like, I don't think Ken was hot on the trail, really. But, like, so the CEO of Foresight actually DM'd Meredith Lynch and address some of her concerns. He said, hi, Meredith. What? This is so weird. It was a lapse in judgment to overlap those two topics into a single post, which he's referencing Ken having foresight in the TikToks about the murders. And we want to make this right. Ken's a passionate guy who got a little lost in the sauce over the story. Why is everybody lost in the sauce? Why are they both saying that? What? What Did they just send out a, a press release to their three it's people? It's very weird. They're like, this is the verbiage we want to use? He's posting an apology on TikTok, removing content and discontinuing his coverage on these cases. So that that was the CEO's response. And then once people continued to email Foresight, it was found out that Foresight has since parted ways publicly, at least with Ken, and say that he doesn't work there anymore. Like, please leave us alone. Basically, there are so many different elements to it that's beyond this. And that's what annoys me when I have to like cover a topic and I just have like a day to put it together. Because I can imagine for those of you who have been experiencing this as it's happened, you know way more than me, but I do know that there is a TikToker named Justin, hold on, what's his name? It's right here, Justin Barrett. I think is his name and he was like an ex like army investigator and he like called bullshit on, on him majorly and like covered a lot of his cases. He was one of the people that Ken not only blocked but threatened legal action to. Apparently, allegedly, Justin says that a victim of one of the families of one of the cases that Ken was covering reached out to him and let him know that they were in a lot of pain because their family member committed you know, they unalived themselves. And Ken was basically saying like, no, no, like I figured it out. This is what actually happened here, there and the other, you know, whatever. And they were communicating to Justin how hurtful it was and how much they absolutely hated that he was covering that case publicly because this was a family member. So there are repercussions to this kind of work. I think that there are ways to cover topics. I think that like a good example, I think is like Kendall Ray, who works with a lot of like victims' families and, you know, has them involved in the way that their stories are told. Like, I think there's a way to do it because awareness is key in a lot of these situations. I mean, he wasn't reporting on news. No. He was like trying to solve yeah. it. Like, don't, don't bother these people's fam. Like, what are you doing? When you start doing shit like this and then you get a little problematic, uh, people go digging on Twitter. Oh, no. These tweets were found. And I just want to say before we show them that he has since come out and said, these tweets are fake. Like, there's no way. Like, I would never put out these tweets. But these are the tweets that surfaced. I can't read them out loud because they're really vulgar. So I'm going to see how I can share them with our, like, visual or non-visual you know, viewers. One of them says, I'm going to unlive my gay teacher. He's such a Q word. I don't, I think that's a slur. One of them says, I see a random 25 year old black man in the showers. And I think maybe if I don't say anything, he won't stab me. Another one says, I don't always smoke PCP, but when I do, I always hang N words afterward. He was like quoting someone. What I would want to know is like, I think it would be a little random for these to be fake. They feel very like, who made these up? <laughs> well, this was 2011, right? So this was a long time ago, which does not excuse yeah. like this is bad like this is really 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 no bad. but it, it's from a period of time where people would have felt more empowered to, to say shit like something this. like that for sure so i just find it a little like he okay so i'll tell you what he said about it to defend himself he dm'd someone on instagram and said these are fake tweets from 2011 even if they were real which they aren't they do not reflect my feelings or beliefs at all there has been a campaign i love when people start getting on this you train. know that's my favorite there has been a campaign the last 48 hours to destroy destroy me on the internet, which has been spearheaded by a woman who I had blocked months ago for harassing me. I think oh he's referencing God. Meredith Lynch. I'm not sure how this smear campaign came to pass, but I'm working with TikTok and legal support to get them taken down and sued for this defamation. They're trying to build a platform on my back where I've killed myself to raise public safety awareness and have actually tracked down ill-intentioned drivers and caught them. What? What? <laughs> I know both of us at the same time were like, wait a second, what? Wait, also, like, that's rich coming from him. Like, Ew, you built a platform on my back. You built your platform on a murder case. But literally, it says they're coat riding clout chasers. Ken, who are you? <laughs> Obviously, I think that it's like, pretty clear he's not very kosher. Like, something's off about this man. And I, I think, it's my belief, this is all our opinion and alleged. 
that he's full of shit. My opinion is the same. And I feel like, okay, so now you're finally going to stop when you've already gone so far as to expose like potential evidence and probably like, have you ever seen a case? You cannot put this type of evidence out there. It could all get ruled out in court and would be like null and void. Like you can't do this. On a just separate, just general true crime note, I feel like I get so annoyed even... <laughs> which I guess probably bad example because it does seem like there's some weird stuff going on. But with uh, the Idaho case, that's all over TikTok and people investigating and trying to figure out what happened. And there's like other names involved and people don't think it was the guy that got arrested anymore. And it stems from people being like, well, the police don't know what's going on. They haven't done this. They haven't done this. The police don't tell you everything they know. It's not all public knowledge. Like, I don't understand why people are under this impression where the police have to tell you everything. Like, no, that's how they solve things is by not telling everyone everything. Yeah, I totally get like family's frustration because if something happened to one of my family members and I was not informed by the police, I would have to like punch someone. Like it would piss me 100%. off so bad. And when I hear stories about that, it makes me super frustrated. And there's also, uh, also caveat that obviously there's no doubt that a lot of the times they do drop the ball and they don't investigate things thoroughly. But I think the just unanimous kind of general impression from most of the public these days is that they are just as apt to solve this crime as the police are. And I'm like, no, just because you have access to the internet does not mean that you know everything. If like, it was someone who was actually well-intentioned in this scenario, I could understand how they would maybe, maybe innocently believe that TikTok might be able to help because you're kind of like crowdsourcing people and people have this like resource to go to and they know to like and keep an eye out or whatever. And because this is kind of an underreported situation that maybe isn't getting connected as much. I, yes. I get it, but the stuff he was doing... Uh, mm. Like, it doesn't seem like helpful. And also, I don't understand why he would be so quick to run and be like, I got it. Like, I cracked the case. Like, this totally makes sense. And I figured out a case that's been going since the 90s. Like, I got it because of TikTok. And I mean, especially when he gets to the point that he's not really asking TikTok for anything else. So it's like, okay, well, if you have this information that allegedly cracked the case, then why aren't you going to the police? Like, the fact that in that last video, he's like, well, and now I'm going to take, I'm going to stop talking and I'll bring all the information that me and my team Team, which I'm like, now you have a team? I thought you were a part of the team. Like, I this I feel like he's shifted his involvement in this. Yeah, it's times. giving like reckless vigilante. Like, I don't know. It's just not really doing what you think it is. And just the amount he responded to this person in the DMs to explain these tweets shows me that something is off. Like, <laughs> 100%. Oh, like, if the tweets are really that fake, you wouldn't have had to write that entire message. Yeah, and I think he realizes that like his little charade is, is done. Like, we're not interested in his little investigation. That being said, I I don't think it's a negative thing for people if you are a very good like honestly Megan our friend Megan would be a really good investigator she's really good at finding shit that like nobody else can find and if you want to use those like skills for good and on your free time try to solve murders and then help the police you know whatever by all means but don't try to get TikTok famous and then like push your yeah, brand yeah I was gonna say it. It, it doesn't coincide with like being a social media influencer or if you want to combine those two things if you are like really sleuthy and good at finding stuff be one of those people like I saw one the other day that honestly it was like wow <laughs> you are you have a gift it's people that will someone will be like you won't be able to find out who I am I don't have any information on my profile and then they like respond with like I've their full name where lady. they live she's and stuff she's so good it was the it was a girl and it was like she's amazing and it's not like she's doing really high tech things she's just really smart and like knows how to connect dots and is like oh well if this then this and she can go like yeah. cross check things and it's just really impressive that is something you could absolutely build a social media following on because you're not doing it you're not causing harm and also <laughs> I mean that's all if Ken was really doing what he said he was doing I don't think that's Ken was really the figuring whole out thing <laughs> it's like it's one thing to be an investigator that like actually is figuring it out what is Ken even doing like nobody knows he's just saying his he's big doing claim all this to fame stuff. is that he just like sourced some points to put on a map even when he says he's gonna help the team and the investigators he's like yeah and I'm gonna help the tech side and the maps Oh my God, how hard is it to add a pin to Google Maps? I know, yeah. And it just, it very much, you know, he says that these people covering his coverage are clout chasers. But honestly, like that's literally what it seems like. It doesn't feel warm, genuine, like you have actual empathy for these people. I'm like, oh, good job. Pat on the back. Is that like, I was not interested in his shit from day one. I feel like I saw the first post and I was like, mm, I don't know. Me uh, too. Feels well, off. That's the thing. My brother, when he first texted me about it, he's like, I don't know if 
this is too dark for you guys to cover, but there's this guy on social media that's like looking for the serial killer and like thinks he found him. And I remember looking at it and being like, mm, no. Can you imagine I was just covering it? Like, look at this guy. He cracked the case. Like, oh no. God. And then have to there. do an update three weeks later where it's like, well, actually. Oh, I feel like uh, we need to move on to something lighter. Because Ken just brought me down. <laughs> I know. Which, I mean, uh, I get those kind of stuff. And then I get so many Britney conspiracy videos, which we were going to kind of dive into. But it's still, I mean, it's definitely still developing. Maybe next week, one of the episodes will do it. And I'll take the time to pull the best evidence. But expect an update. Because I'm not going to say I fully believe all the conspiracies now. But my opinion has shifted a Just tap. a tiny bit. There's still some weirdness surrounding it that is a little bit more weird. I have some good stuff that I found that's very, like... Oh, really? Oh, shit. Oh. And it's not just like, look at this clip slowed down. It's like actual information that I'm like, oh, that's very interesting <laughs> to note. Okay, so we'll talk about that on Monday, I guess. Yes, yes. But instead, let's talk about Taylor Swift. Sad times. Her and Joe broke up, but we all knew that already. I was devastated by that. I feel like I never really saw much about their relationship to begin with, so I didn't really feel any kind of That's way. what made it so special. <laughs> that you felt like it was real because they didn't show it. Yes, and they, I mean, they were together for so long, and the song she wrote about him, and she wore his necklace with his, like, with the little J. Honestly, I don't know anything about him. I don't even know what he does for a living, but I am kind of devastated because she just seemed very happy. He's an actor. And also, oh, he's an actor? Oh, Slay. But also, people are clowning him so bad now when nobody even knows what happened, but like they'll literally take like paparazzi pictures of him like wearing a sweater and be like, look at this fucking idiot, like wearing the sweater. I'm like, what? And I've seen a couple posts just actually yesterday of people being like, what did he do to her? Because it's like little things that she's done, which definitely could be people blowing things out of proportion and or misinterpreting. But people think that he like maybe cheated on her or something. I mean, listen, one thing's for sure. Like if he did cheat on her, we're gonna know soon. Like Taylor's gonna write about that shit. Like we know that. So let's just all be patient. But like, we can't jump on the man. They had a long relationship. They both meant a lot to each other. Can we not? It's funny because at first people were a little like, oh, what did Joe do? Blah, blah. And probably even the TikToks I saw yesterday were like from a couple weeks ago. But I feel like he's gotten some fans that maybe have crawled back to him a little bit now because Taylor has all but verbally confirmed <laughs> that her and Maddie Healy are like a thing. And he is the lead singer of 1975? Yes, which I feel like we should preface this entire thing with like, I'm, I am I like Taylor Swift a lot. I know the words to the majority of her songs, but I'm not like a diehard Swifty and I'm not like super invested in all of this. So I could be missing some things or I feel like I'm not like blatantly misinformed, but maybe there's some nuances that I'm not picking up on. But um, I could not tell you one 1975 song. Only one I know is because my, my brother always used to play the one that's like, oh, your body smell like chocolate. It's funny because I just saw a TikTok where someone was like, that's the only song I know is it's called Chocolate. But I've never even heard go. that one. Yeah. She's known him for a long time. And I guess there are rumors that they maybe like had a brief fling back in the day, like literally like 10 years ago. But like timing didn't work out and it just never happened. So they've been friends, but supposedly they've been secretly in love with each other. And now timing has lined up and everything's perfect. Like Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez. Exactly. Except everyone's like so pissed they ended up together. Well, and <laughs> same situation here. So um, <laughs> it's been kind of a weird unfolding of the whole scenario because the reason people first started speculating is because he started showing up he went to all three of the philadelphia shows and then he also went to i don't remember where the next location was but he went to like the next three as well he's been to six shows in a row lucky bastard and he doesn't just go and like hang out he goes and literally like which he wouldn't do if like they weren't together like maybe one maybe two but not but six. six feels in a row yeah it's like olivia wilde and yeah. harry like if you're gonna go to that many shows you're dating. yeah exactly so that already is like red flag but then also people have been videotaping him at the shows and he's like very much like like, he is looking onto the stage like he is in love. Swooning over her. All of it is very much like, if you take a step back, you're like, oh, that seems so cute. He's being a supportive boyfriend. Good for her. And everyone's like, Jill barely came to any of her shows. And look at Maddie's already been to six. So that's how it starts. But also, Ugh. that was coupled with people being super skeptical and being like, this better not be a real thing. And I hope that they're maybe just like, they're going to collab musically and they're not actually dating. And this is all kind of a publicity stunt, which I would believe. Quick question. People from the comments that I've seen on 
TikTok seem to really dislike Maddie Healy. I'm getting to that. Oh, okay. So it starts and I'm seeing a lot of people being like, well, I don't like Maddie Healy, but they seem really cute. And this is really sweet that he's going to all of her shows. So they were kind of trying to like find maybe the silver lining. They've also now been, um, I think it was like after he'd gone to a few shows, then they also got photographed like out in public afterwards, like out getting drinks and they were holding hands. People had been upset from the beginning, but I think I saw a lot of people kind of trying to either pretend it wasn't a real thing or trying to justify it. But he has had a history of problematic behavior and a lot of people do not like him for valid reasons. And it's not like it's, he did stuff or said stuff five years ago, 10 years, like it was a few months ago. Oh, what'd he do? <laughs> Numerous things. Um, Let me pull up an article. There are are people that will defend him and say there are like explanations behind his behavior for a lot of this, which some of it I'm like, okay, but that it's kind of like impact versus intent situation. Like, okay, well, I don't care if you're kidding, you're still an asshole, you know? Yeah, yeah. So just this past February, he appeared on the Adam Friedland Show podcast where the host made jokes speculating about rapper Ice Spice's ethnicity. Her father's black and her mother is Dominican apparently. And they called her Inuit Spice Girl and this chubby Chinese lady using Chinese and Hawaiian accents while Healy laughed along and joked that she was dumb. He later gave a half-hearted apology during a concert saying, I'm kind of a bit sorry if I've offended you and suggested his joking got misconstrued. The episode has since been pulled from what? Apple and Spotify. Hello? I was gonna say, do we have a clip? We don't. <laughs> no, I'm sure I could probably find one. Here it is if I can. Ice Spice, you know who that is? Nick doesn't know it. She's is. like one a, of the Spice Girls. Yes, that's she's right. like this she's, rapper. She's the rapper that has the she's a Inuit Spice Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Just this chubby Chinese lady. <laughs> yeah, I'm rapping her music. <laughs> Do they talk like that? Do anyone talk like that? They don't talk with a Chinese accent. They talk like a, a more Hawaiian style. Bungwa. <laughs> yeah, more yeah, Hawaiian. They, yeah. Welcome to Hawaii. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Locals only. Locals <laughs> only. Coconut. <laughs> yeah, that's what Ice Spice is like. Uh -huh. I saw a TikTok today of a girl talking about this, though, and she brought up the fact that Taylor Swift has such a specific type of feminism that she's promoted through her music and her entire yeah. career. Even recently, there was a comment, I guess, in the show, what's it called, Ginny and Georgia? It was a Netflix show. There's some line in it about Taylor Swift and something about her like going through a bunch of boyfriends. And I guess she spoke out about it and made a comment about how sexist it was. And the girl talking about it was like, so it just feels a little odd to me that you would get so triggered by that. Like, I mean, that's fine if you want to get mad at that. People shouldn't be making that joke. But then you're going to date someone that just recently is like willing to be like, yeah, that dumb bitch in a podcast. He very much plays into exactly the kind of behavior that Taylor Swift is against, supposedly. So it feels like she's giving him a pass, but why? That is essentially why her fans are mad. I, I saw one that describes it as like, especially because the concert's going on right now, they have entered into an implied social contract where it's like, people bought these tickets because they're expecting Taylor Swift to perform and present herself in a certain way. And now not only is she, I, people aren't mad that she's just supposedly dating Maddie Healy. It's that he's been at the shows and I guess the last couple, he's even gone on stage and performed with Phoebe Bridges. Really? Like unplanned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it's like not promoted or anything. Like people bought tickets. They didn't know Maddie Healy was going to open the show. And so much of her audience are part of marginalized groups that he has spoken negatively against. So it's like they're going to this place that they want it to be a safe space and then he's on stage and it's like what the fuck oh and taylor swift of all people to be presenting that and not say anything and not take any accountability or that's like that's interesting i was wondering why people were so mad because all i see in the comments are people saying like no, we hate this guy. Well, so some of the other stuff that he's done, uh, he's faced accusations of using Black Lives Matter to promote his music. What? He posted a now deleted tweet in 2020 in support of the movement with a link to his band song, which contains lyrics about police brutality. In January, he called the Irish a simple people at a show in Dublin. Some fans thought he was joking, others not. And in October, he told an Irish fan named Dervla at a meet and greet that your name sounds like something you move gravel with. <laughs> Interesting. But you know what? I do know that like a lot of British people have some fucked up humor. That's a common thread amongst the British. <laughs> There's some stuff that I'm like, he might not mean a lot of the things he's saying, but that doesn't mean he's not saying them and they don't have impact. So I feel like it's kind of irrelevant. But um, one of the big ones, and I think why people are mad uh, that he's performing and because they're also like, what show is he going to come in like do a song with her actually? Because he was- <laughs> Jump scare, Maddie Healy gets on stage. Right. Well, so I guess just back in January, so literally like 
four months ago, he faced criticism for appearing to do a Nazi salute on stage while singing the lyric, thank you, Kanye, very cool. From his band song, Love It If We Made It, which some considered a jab at Kanye West's anti-Semitism, while others considered the apparent salute irresponsible and offensive. I would say it is both. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't need to be one or the other. Yeah, exactly. Because he has even made a comment talking about Kanye later on where he's clearly denouncing anti-Semitism. The thing that bums me out with Kanye is that, like, he's obviously somebody who is dealing with grief and has mental health issues. That's not an excuse to like do anti-Semitism. Yeah. It's not really, is it? It's like, it gets to a point where it's like, you gotta draw a line like when you're being a conceptual artist, like when you're hurting people, cause it's just not fucking worth it, you know? Yeah. Art's not worth hurting people. A lot of artists get lost in the kind of, I've done it, just like basically being an asshole mm. because I was doing something artistic. Yeah. So basically he does like performative stuff to make himself look bad, but it's not coming from a place of hatred. It's coming of a place of like satire, I guess. You know what though? If that's like a one-time thing, and again, if, if I'm not part of the communities he offended, then fuck me. Yeah. You know, like my opinion doesn't matter. But at the same time, like he seems to be a repeat offender where it's like, it's kind of like you're a senile like grandfather or something that's like yes, continuously yes. doing things because they think it's funny. And you're like, can you stop? Like that's actually racist and horrible. And they just keep doing it. It's like, okay, then you're just an asshole. Like, you're just not willing to learn at all. And people are telling you that it's upsetting and you're still doing it. So it's like, yeah, that yeah, doesn't yeah. matter if you weren't serious because it's now still I'm bothering people. Now I'm seeing the thread and why Taylor fans would be fucking pissed because yeah, you're because 100% Because he, he right. does everything she stands against. So yeah. it's not just like, we want to control who you're dating and we don't think he's good for you. It's like, no, you are bringing him into this world that you created and like told us all was a safe space and you're bringing in someone that's doing things to make us feel the opposite. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, now I get it. He sparked controversy in 2019 for criticizing organized religion. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and in 2018 for suggesting misogyny no longer exists in rock and roll. Healy's onstage antics have also garnered media attention and criticism. Some consider his tendency to kiss fans, men and women, at performances creepy, though he clarified he does ask for consent first. I guess he makes out with fans at shows. That's weird. I agree. That's really weird. I mean, you could get consent, but like the whole power dynamic there is it, fucked. It's, and yeah, the it's pressure weird. of asking them in front of like a crowd of like thousands of people. And just don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, but um, one of the things also that people are specifically bringing up because it feels particularly relevant is he's quoted saying something about he would never be Taylor Swift's boyfriend. It's like, <gasps> stop. Like, fuck that. That would be emasculating or something. Oh my God, I love the internet. The internet knows all. I, well, and I read from someone else that it's being taken kind of out of context because it was like the start of his career. So he was saying that he didn't want to be associated just as like, oh, they were insinuating okay. that he kind of meant he didn't want to like ride her coattails to be famous. Like he wanted to make it on his own first. Back in 2016, when asked if he was afraid of losing himself in a relationship, the 1975 rocker reportedly said, yeah, absolutely. And the reason I mentioned that is because if I had gone out with Taylor Swift, I would have been fucking hell. I'm not being Taylor Swift's boyfriend. You know, fuck that. How, what? He goes on to say, that's also a man thing, a demasculating, emasculating thing. To date someone more talented than you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is so weird that she's with him. I'm actually like kind of in disbelief. So here, let's watch this TikTok that I came across. This is the girl I was talking about earlier. The thing that really gets me about the Maddie Healy situation in addition to all of the other stuff is that the one like claim to social justice that Taylor Swift has clung to throughout her entire career has been this very specific flavor of feminism, of white feminism specifically, the woman supporting woman feminism. The idea that feminism is all about not tearing down other women in the spotlight and, you know, lifting them up and supporting them and not criticizing them too harshly. And while Maddie Healy's horrific behavior surrounding Jewish people and Muslim people and people with API accents and black women should, in a perfect world, even in a kind of okay world, should be enough to to give Taylor Swift the ick and know to not parade him around like he's a new fucking Prada bag the way that she has been doing. It's more surprising to me. I don't think it's worse. It's just more surprising to me that she has also thrown her specific Taylor Swift feminism to the wind simply so that she can parade him around. Like, what are you gaining out of this? Because if we look at what 
Maddie Healy has had to say about women in the spotlight, we don't actually have to look too far. We just have to go back a couple months ago and see that he, oh, called Ice Spice a dumb bitch on his podcast. And Maddie Healy apologists love to tell me he apologized for that. No the fuck he didn't. I watched his sad excuse of an apology and he said, I'm a little bit sorry if, I'm kind of sorry if anyone was a little bit offended about what I said and said the quiet part out loud where he revealed, I'm not sorry that my joke was misconstrued. I'm sorry because I don't want I Spice to think that I'm a dick and I don't want people to think that I'm mean-spirited. He revealed in his apology that he's only sorry because he doesn't want that to harm his reputation. And you know that if Maddie Healy had instead gone on a podcast in fucking February and called Taylor Swift a dumb bitch, if any of her friends dared associate with that man afterwards, they would be dead to her because that would completely go against the Taylor Swift, you know, feminism code of values that she has held so tightly onto throughout her career. Like I believe it was 2021 after Taylor Swift had her political activism era that she subsequently dropped and refused to speak out against any meaningful political issues after that. The one thing that she did criticize was a passing joke that was made in the show Ginny and Georgia, which forgive me if I'm wrong, wasn't being like universally watched at that time about how Taylor Swift goes through men very quickly. And she took time out of her day to call out how like sexist and misogynistic that was. The shit that Maddie Healy has said about women is exponentially worse. And so the fact that you are so bothered with that and not this, and you still feel like he's, you know, good enough of a person to parade around, says a lot about what you value. Yikes, what did people say to that? I feel like people probably agree. Someone said, in retrospect, Taylor has been very vocal on issues that affect her directly or widen her audience, but beyond that, nothing. That's interesting. So on that note, I also saw one that pointed this out. Damn. It's a clip from her documentary. This is making me sad. Well, and it's also weird because this tour, she's been changing the pronouns in a lot of her songs that she's been singing. So like randomly she'll have it be about a she or she'll say her. So people have been like so ready for her to like take this step and really embrace her identity that she has alluded to having, I guess. And then to do a complete 180 and be like, oh, I'm dating Maddie Healy? Like, huh? Like, not what people expected. Yeah, and there's also a lot of, like I'm seeing in the comments, there's a lot of talk about the fact that she doesn't need to have him be her boyfriend publicly. Like she could very easily keep him very private. That's one of the things I find the most odd about this. All of her relationships have been relatively, I mean, yeah, she's gone, she's had some public outings and stuff or maybe they get photographed, but like she's been pretty private and especially like Joe yeah. was pretty private. So why with this one, would you feel so comfortable flaunting it? Well, it, it probably has a lot to do with him. He's probably initiating that like. I guess, but it's, it's odd because it also comes sides with what is clearly the peak of her career to a point that it's so impressive the reach she has. I don't know if you saw the videos of, I think it was in Philadelphia. There were 20,000 people outside of the stadium singing oh along. God. The fact you can sell out three stadium shows and then have 20,000 people Insane. go stand outside just to hear. Like she is on this whole other level with this tour. And then to do this, it's the weirdest self-sabotage I've ever seen. If you're in love with him, yeah. whatever girl, I don't get it. But like, hide it. Like, why are you doing this to your brand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It does seem like unnecessary to be so public and then to push it even further. Because one thing that we know for sure is that Taylor Swift is very aware of conversations going on online. She is very internet savvy. Both of them are chronically online, her and Maddie. That's what makes this whole exactly. thing uh, even So weirder. the fact that she knows and understands where her fans are coming from and then proceeds to kind of not only just be with him and have him in her shows, literally have him on stage when he's not planned to be, that is so weird now that I understand it more. People were already feeling some type of way, but then I think as soon as he got introduced as being like part of the show in any capacity, they were like, no, 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 no that we're, we're not okay with that. I think people yeah. were kind of willing to overlook it before or like find excuses. It's like, well, she's happy. They're not okay with this. And I think that this is very, this didn't age well. That it is so frilly and spineless of me to stand on stage and be like, happy pride month, you guys. And then not say this when someone's literally coming for their neck. She has not spoken out on any of the trans stuff going on. She hasn't spoken out about any of the drag stuff going on, any of the gender stuff in general. Honestly, she doesn't even really speak out that much about gay pride anymore. Interesting. And this was in the 
era of like the extreme division because of like Trump and like all of that time where everybody was yep, losing their yep, shit. Yeah. Yeah, fuck. And also it was when everyone was accusing her of being conservative and being a Trump supporter. And this was like in the documentary where she revealed that she was not. Oh, this all feels a little icky. I don't know. I don't, obviously we don't know mm -hmm. for sure like where her heart lies and like what her intentions are and the things she's spoken up about, but wow. And then also I'll throw in one last theory that people think that this also could be the work of Tree Payne, who I guess is the... Tree Payne? Not T-Pain? Pain? That's a name, no. Shut the fuck up. Tree Payne. <laughs> Sounds like a name I'd come up with when I'm high. She's this publicist that Taylor brought on in 2014. Her the name biggest. is Tree Payne. Yeah, literally. Like birth name? Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> think so. Is this a publicist <laughs> stage name? I'm so confused. Okay, uh-huh. She's been the publicist of, of Taylor Swift since 2014. She's guided Swift through issues such as her sexual assault and master's dispute. And I know she was also like instrumental in the whole like reputation marketing. A lot of the successful things that Taylor has done in the last few years, I guess Tree Payne has been involved in. Yeah. And people think maybe she's involved in facilitating this Maddie Healy thing as a promotional thing and that they're just going to eventually come out with music together because they were just seen leaving even um, a studio in New York just like There's this There's so many other artists. She couldn't do it with someone else? That's I'm like, I've never even heard a 1975 song, so it's not like... Didn't her and Joe just break up? I mean, shit. Like, they were together for so many years. I don't know. That's so... And this is not related to this at all, but I had told Lily when she told me we should cover Maddie Healy and Taylor, I was like, well, then we should also cover Phoebe Bridgers and Bo Burnham because <laughs> Phoebe Bridgers is an opening act for Taylor Swift and there was a video that Keith Urban posted with um Nicole what's her name Kidman Nicole Kidman and they were like jamming at the Taylor Swift concert and when you pan you see Bo Burnham and Phoebe Bridgers kissing in the back and honestly I want to pull up the video because it is absolutely absurd that anybody caught that they were kissing in the background like the eyes people have on them is so insane because I'm like looking and I'm like all I see is Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban am I missing something honestly I I'm not that surprised though because people have been watching Watching that like little VIP section like Hawks because fucking Maddie Healy has been there every single night and they want to see how he's interacting with people because they'll show like there's clips of him and Taylor's dad. There's clips of him and Gigi. <laughs> this is the video. It's Keith Urban, Nicole Kidman. And in the back, if you squint your eyes, hold on, they oh like slow it down. God. I know. Isn't it fucking insane? There. There. <gasps> Did you see it? It's literally yeah. the most obscure. And it's like, okay, tall guy, blonde girl. But then you remember this is VIP. Okay, that is like Phoebe Bridger's haircut. Okay, well, Burnham is pretty tall. And they've also been spotted by paparazzi. So everybody's breaking up and making out. Oh my God. I'm so confused. Well, and I, I saw someone post, they're like, the Taylor Swift universe is the strangest group of people. Like Keith Urban, Nicole Kidman, Blake Lively, Ryan <laughs> no, Reynolds. My thought. Like, I'm like, Keith? Ariana, what are you oh doing here? I was so confused. <laughs> like literally, why are you here? But yeah. Yeah, I think that's all the juice we've got for you today. I was so blissfully ignorant before this and now now I know and now I have the ick for Maddie Healy when I didn't even know nothing about that I know I didn't really know this. anything either and I saw the videos of him like watching her on stage and I'm like oh that's kind of cute and then I saw the other stuff and I was like never mind <laughs> <laughs> but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed these topics today and um hey, that's all we have for you <laughs> we don't got nothing else I, I was gonna say because there's there are way more topics but they're all so long yeah we're doing at least like one maybe semi-long one and then like little mini ones so we can keep up with these two a week episodes you know we're trying our best oh wait i one last update and not a real i don't have the facts in front of me <laughs> oh, but Lord. uh someone tweeted me that the tattoo situation i don't know if we covered it in the video that someone was flying her out and doing it for free for mother's day i had called out that that was gonna happen because i knew how tiktok works but yes somebody actually was gonna fly out the tattoo lady from our last episode if you didn't see the tattoo gate thing you gotta see it but not only that so many people drew designs for her like it was really really nice well and then someone tweeted me today a link to a video that i've yet to watch but it said that apparently Apparently that tattoo artist's boss has now been exposed because that's like the business practice that they teach their people. Oh, she's got like a whole like pyramid scheme or something weird going I on. I was just going to say, so it's actually like a pyramid scheme. It's not just this one artist. And something that a lot of people wanted us to cover about that, but we didn't like, we hadn't seen it when we filmed the video was that apparently this oh, tattoo artist was outed because it was found out that she traced that Fox design 
from art on Etsy. I know that that is shocking to find out. Yeah, it's just literally, it's all a fucking disaster. So there was a lot of comments of that, like, oh, I wish you would have covered this. But that happened after we had already filmed. So that's our little tattoo gate update. Fun times, but I'm glad she's getting the tattoo that she wanted from the beginning for free and getting flown out to Los Angeles. But... Anyway, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching or listening. If you don't know, we're on all listening things for podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that stuff. And yeah, we will see you on Monday. Bye. Bye. Bye.